collected in a storm system under the parking lot. And the overflow from that system comes into a rain garden here as well. And then there's a swale all the way down the front of the building to handle our stormwater. Um, the, that swale at the front of the building facing Cook Street is planted with rushes. And then we have native and adaptive planting on either side of it, so creating a very strong vegetated edge along the front of the building. These two trees exist. They were part of the Cook Street upgrades. They're cat syrup. I think one is dead, actually, but it will be replaced in its day. Um, the pedestrian entrance to the building is through here, and it's accented with banded concrete paving, so light and dark um, grays as you go in. It's a little plaza area. There's seating outside there. There's um, partially covered bike racks there. So the concept is that um, in, in the future, there's the um, the facility itself with the therapy and, and the treatment. And then there is potentially a, a gym that the community could use. And so you could sit out here and have a, a refreshing drink after you've exercised and be able to possibly look in and see the community still exercising in the gym. I guess the most significant um, differences we've made to the plan is that Cobb Street, as Peter mentioned, or Cobb Lane, is going to be expanded and we have to remove seven Bohol maples to do that. And so we've reinstated that green edge with three larger growing trees. So these are, are a type of a maple with a much bigger canopy and a green edge along there. And then we, this is um, a cat clinic over here. And right now, their parking lot and this site's parking lot is just a sea of ash hole that never ends. And so we're defining our edge by um, introducing planting and trees along this edge and using soil cells, which will also help with stormwater management and create the soil volumes we need. So really making a compact site that's edged with green and is more concise and, and looks better all around. Commissioner Jack, I see some questions from Council, so Councillor German, and then Councillor Haynes with questions. I don't know if it's going to be to you, Ms. Bartlett, or Mr. Heath. I believe it's your. Um, so I'll just go. There you go. Um, for you to the applicant, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so you're, leaving, you're using the silver cells or the equivalent? We're using, we're going to, well, yes. Yeah. We're using soil cells. I think yeah. they're coming from City Green. So right, yeah. either one, whichever. Uh, those, are you, have you considered using those as part of a stormwater requirement? They are recognized in Washington State as the equivalency of <coughs> rain gardens. Yes, and we are using them along this edge to handle stormwater. Um, the reason we're not doing it throughout is because the grading already exists, so we're trying to reutilize that parking lot. Sure. Limited by well, I'm glad to see you're using them anyway. Thank you. My other question is to the architect, I think. Thank you. Uh, for you, Mr. Chair, um, having sat with us all night, you probably know what this question might be about. Um, but I'm wondering if you had considered uh, including conduit as you redevelop for the possibility of future solar. Not a not a big expense item. Um, yeah. and while you're constructing at least. So I mean, um, conduit is currently not um, considered for uh, any um, solar panels or solar hot water. Uh, this uh, building um, will be uh, sim like, like, eight, like an 82 or uh, equivalent um, to ASHRAE um, as, uh, and, and that will be uh, secured by a government. I, I, I just wonder, I, I appreciate the Energite 82, I wonder why not conduit, it's very inexpensive when you're developing, it doesn't commit you to solar, yeah. but makes it much easier if there's a desire to do so in the future. I think it's a good point. I mean, it's easy to do in this building yeah. because it is wood construction. It's the same story. To get to the roof, we have to chase to the roof because yeah. all the mechanical units are actually on the uh, lower uh, existing roof. So it would be easy to, to get to that, should that be. Uh, I would appreciate it if that could be done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sanders. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Over to the applicant who's just going to sit down and have a couple questions. <laughs> 
want to ask you about your, the, the signage. And uh, you might have mentioned, I missed it, about the illuminated signage. Yes. Um, and then back with how, how much a light is that going to emit? Um, to, to be honest, that's not really defined at this point. We, we, um, we have the size and the location, um, and then it will be illuminated. But it's more an in, indirect illumination because it is a single letter signage that will be uh, proud of the actual uh, facade, in this case the stucco. Uh, and then so it will be the light that is shining either on that uh, stucco surface. Um, but it has to be sensitive uh, to the neighborhood. We are aware of that. Well, and that's it's not, a, not a bright, uh, glowing, gleaming. Uh, so we have those new townhouses right across the road, and I'll yeah. be sensitive of that. And it, you know that this isn't illuminated signage isn't typical of this neighborhood here. Yeah. Now I I was saying I might I might have missed this. We're looking at it too. Where underneath the sign where you have the big back that side that's showing people exercising. Is that a mural or is that actually people in there? Is that open and you can see people exercising? Yeah. So this is actually the uh, the gym area on this corner. That's the, the, the second um, access point, and this here is the main access. Uh, so yes, that is a gym where people will exercise, and it is uh, purposely uh, very transparent, so that it actually is visible from the street for the public, um, as the, the the owners want to promote uh, a healthy uh, lifestyle. Oh, that would be very different in the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Okay, looking forward to it. Thank you, Councilor Sanders. Any further questions, Council? Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. York. I think you can have a seat. We're going to now invite the public to uh, come forward and make any comments or questions, and I may ask you to come back if there's any questions raised. Welcome to the meeting, Mr. Schmuck. Good evening, Mary Council. My name is John Schmuck. I live at 11 Rock Street, and I'm the president of the Quadris Theatre Hill. Community Association, uh, regarding this pr proposal as presented, we are generally supportive. We've been dealing with, uh, with this for the past year with proponents. We held a public meeting and it was quite well attended by the residents of the area. Uh, two points, two people stood up and one of the first questions they had about this, they said, where's the pub going to be in this, person, <laughs> this uh, part of this development? Who else so, is that you <laughs> Actually, I was the third one, Councilor Drew. Um, but speaking in generally about the Four Corners Village, um, my remarks now are directed at Council at, at Planning. Uh, five years ago, we had the Bank of Montreal on the site. Over the thrifty plaza there, we had an insurance agency. We had the Women in Need store. We had a pizza, pizza shop. We had a video store, which may have gone anyhow. Uh, Katie Corner then, we had a bike shop. I want to talk to you guys about 50 years ago and just ask you if you think it's improved in the last 50 years. I grew up in this neighborhood, I lived three, grew up three blocks away from it. 50 years ago, in the old Four Ways complex, which is Katie Horner of the Thrifties, the older retail development, we had doctor's offices, we had a pharmacy shop, we had a beauty shop, there's a notion store, there's a small supermarket in there, there's a full service meat department in there, there's a fish and chip shop that didn't have to share its business with the Chinese food. Uh, what's come out of this is that we really need a revitalization of the Four Corners Village in a state of the local area plan. Things that we'd like to see there, let's see a coffee shop, we'd like to see a pub style restaurant, we'd like to see a financial institution back. There's no financial institution. When we, the Bank of Montreal closed, we helped them have a final meeting with the neighborhood and it was very, quite well attended. Most of the people who attended that meeting were elderly. And one lady stood up and she said, listen, if the financial institution leaves here, and other, other institutions leave here that we rely on for daily use, and I lose my driver's license, we're going to have to move. Because these are you know, they're elderly folks. And we've just been losing one service after another after another in this particular area. Now again, this is nothing speaking negatively about this, but this is speaking to you folks and the planning. Uh, we have a, um, a plan to have a Doug Street Court Doug Street Quarter uh, study starting this year. And ultimately, there's the plan for the Quarter Street Quarter. We would like, to, we would like to you folks to compress the timeline of that. We would like to see the Quarter Street Quarter start within a year. We need this. We need this to be as, as an impetus for redevelopment of the area. We want to see services provided back in the area. We want to see some revitalization. We want to see it become a pedestrian-oriented uh, um, village as stated in the local area plan and we want to become a walkable community. So we've asked for this in the letter we sent to you on the strategic plan, and I would 
would like to put it in everybody's mind now and give them an impression of the timeline for that. <coughs> and again, regarding this particular proposal, we congratulate the Bachelor folks. We're very pleased with the consultation and we'll welcome the neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. Schmuck. I'm going to ask, unless it's, can we, can't we? Uh, oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Councilor Gerber. I thought you wanted to get my attention. Any further input would be welcome. Calling for a second time. Any further input would be welcome. And like an auctioneer, calling for the third and final time. Thank you. I shall close public input at this point. Turn it over to Council for a decision. Councilor German. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the recommendation. Second. Second by Councilor Workland. Would you like to open, Mr. German? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, I really do agree with what John just said. Even the public. But um, <laughs> I really think this is the revitalization of a tired site, but it is the first step in a revitalization of a very tired Four Corners village, and, and that is desperately needed. And I, I agree, car, we have way, way too many corridors in Saanich that are just conduits for cars, and, and that has to change. They have to become places for people. Uh, this needs to be over time and hopefully not a great deal of time to become a walkable, livable community. And I would add cyclable to uh, and work, work on Cook Street. Um, very good work by engineering has gone a long way towards that. So uh, this is this could help to trigger things in that area. And I hope uh, we will provide our staff with the resources to uh, to move on to the planning of this area as well as Mr. Mark has requested. Um, I appreciate the landscape improvements. Uh, I appreciate the beautification of Cobb Lane. I'll just repeat for the benefit perhaps of uh, engineering that uh, I don't think widening Cobb Lane is an improvement. Uh, widening streets, residents on them, usually means increased speed. Uh, yes, if it's kept narrow as it is, you might have to pick your way through and you might have to stop your car sometimes to let another car pass and so forth. But uh, in terms of the livability of the street, that's a positive, not a negative. So, yeah, I'm happy enough to take the 1.5 meters, but I hope that would be come in the future that we would revisit our thoughts about widening that street. That would become 1.5 more meters of landscaping. And we would not, in the process, lose seven trees, which I think would be a real plus. But I'm happy to see this come forward and happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chairman. Just before I move on to Councillors Murdoch and Workland, during the uh, question period, it was uh, asked whether or not the developer or the applicant would consider roughing in for solar. Yeah. And so there is nothing in the recommendation. So I'm wondering if Council is interested in undertaking an amendment to add a seat uh, if that was the intent of the question. I believe the applicant said he would be willing to do that. Uh, if that's the case, if you could so indicate. Well, we've closed yeah, it. Well, no, okay. I will, uh, I will then move and then let's see that we ask for conduit for the possibility of future solar. Thank you. So under the recommendation, we shall add a C that indicates uh, the inclusion for potential photovoltaic conduit, and not the full introduction at this point. Madam yes. Clerk, are we heading down the right direction with that amendment? That is correct, so Mr. Chair. We would add it actually to the tail end of item B. Okay. So we will just show that amendment moved by uh, <coughs> Councillor German. Was there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Workland. So we're just going to. Uh, deal with that amendment briefly if we may, Council. So, anybody wishing to speak on the amendment only? Seeing none, we should put the question just on the amendment, and that is to add a, a Part B to B, uh, which would be the inclusion of conduit. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Carried. Thank you. So, we're back on the main recommendation. Uh, thank you for indulging that process, Council. Council Murdoch, Councilor Murdoch, and then Councilor Workland, and then Councilor Haynes. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I'll keep my comments brief as I'm sure we all are looking forward to, to wrapping this up. Um, I uh, will be supportive of the development permit amendment application. Um, I am pleased to see the revitalization of this site and hope that that does, as others have indicated, um, 
kick off the uh, steps toward revitalization in the area more broadly. I think this is a, a, a rather appropriate improvement to, uh, to this location. I'm also pleased to see the reduction in impervious surface and the addition of uh, some, some rather attractive landscaping on the site. My final comment would just be how impressed I am with how far uh, these digital renderings of what the designs will look like have come. Uh, what appears to be a, a left-handed guitar player walking down the street <laughs> in that direction is rather impressive. So I'm, I'm pleased with the level of detail and assumptions about who's going to be tra traversing the area. So, uh, and somebody's missing legs, apparently. Yes. <laughs> another person that has a bike, remarkable. So uh, anyway, I think uh, I think it's impressive, and I'm, I'm pleased with uh, with what's being. Thank you, Councillor Murdoch. Councillors Workland, Haynes, and Brown, in that order. This thing, how you describe it, if you've been in a club or something, but anyway, coming back, uh, I would like to thank the applicant for this very attractive building that they brought into this community, and I do support it. And that's what all I have to say. I have one question to staff. We spent a lot of time talking about condo ready for solar. And it costs about a hundred to two hundred bucks to put it in. Our time is worth more than that. Could we? What's involved in making it a standard policy that anything bigger than one story building runs at four inch pipe up? Good question, Councillor. We're going to that to our director of planning. We can certainly provide you some simple feedback on how to do that, making sure that you cover off the buildings you want to, and actually just acknowledge that certain buildings, such as, say, a grocery store, doesn't need that because it's an open span structure, so we can certainly come back to fairly quickly with some wording that would uh, allow you to provide direction to us, and we would pursue that with all applicants that are relevant. Yep. Could allow us to talk about something else? No, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Workland. Councillor Haynes. I'd like to express my appreciation for my colleagues' efforts to make us more efficient. Thank you. Um, my compliments to the applicant. Um, Backfit is, has become a remarkable success in Saanich. Um, full disclosure, several members of my family use your services, including my young son. I'm particularly impressed by the educational program you deliver as part of this. With your near 40 parking stalls there, I can see that you will be drawing um, clientele to this region and I do see it as part of the much needed economic revitalization of this area. But I also see this, the quality of your application is just excellent. Your attention to the landscaping, the use of water, the soil cells. As I looked around it I thought, wow, you guys could go and teach BC Hydro or something. But um, I'll save that. No, uh, no, I didn't mean that unkindly. Um, just because you've got some leading edge um, design elements here of concerns. So I'm very pleased to see this here. I'm delighted that you're staying in Saanich with this business and I know you're going to go from strength to strength and lead as an anchor to the economic revitalization that is needed in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, I'm very excited about this actually because <laughs> You've taken a tired uh, bank building, and I used to have a business center in a bank building, so I know how uh, efficient or uh, cheaply made they are. They're very kind of like box-oriented, so you've really taken it to a great uh, improvement to this area, and hopefully it will kickstart. Um, so some of the things I, I really think are worth mentioning is the whole green technology. Uh, I can't remember uh, another applicant in the, in the last number of years talking about movable sunscreens uh, and a heat recovery ventilation system and skylights to maximize natural daylight. And so uh, some of those things are just excellent. Of course, it probably fits in with the uh, philosophy of, of the business. So I want to thank you for that. And the other thing that I, I think is really interesting about this is the... Uh, Obviously, the investment in alternative transportation uh, improvements, uh, obviously for your staff and others. But uh, I like the idea around the uh, sidewalk along Clavelli Terrace would meander through the existing trees. Again, it, it does provide a, a sort of better walking environment uh, in a very car-oriented area. 
and I, like others, are, I'm hoping that this will uh, kickstart maybe some redevelopment on the other side. I think uh, developers uh, that are looking will look at this project and say, well, they took a tired building and they came up with this very creative way of reusing it. So I'm pleased to support this. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Any further comments from Council? I'll just quickly weigh in with a question first uh, to our Director of Planning. If the applicant ever wanted to add anything to the roof, obviously not in the places where they have uh, the wonderful light access, but on the lower part that's closer to the intersection, if they wanted to add a, a green roof, so to speak, would they need to come back to Council to do that? Without seeing or supposing the details of the plan, uh, most likely yes. Thank you very much. So uh, I love this idea. I think it's gorgeous. It's, it's a place that my, full disclosure, my wife has frequented in the past. Uh, the only thing I would say is, is it's going to be so beautiful around the periphery of the building is perhaps adding some green to the building itself without obviously damaging the architectural <coughs> roof of it, but just to fully become a part of that neighborhood. I think it's going to be great. The bike kitchen, great. Uh, I've heard from residents who are begging for a garbage can halfway down, cook. So you're adding it at the end, which is uh, better than no garbage can. Uh, I think maybe doggy bags, you might want to be heads up on that. That's something that people will inevitably want to take advantage of. So at this point, we are looking at a motion which would be to approve Development Permit Amendment EPA 00832. Seeing no further speakers, we'll put the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Uh, Terry. So at this point, we would look like move for a motion to adjourn for meeting of the whole and then reconvene the council. So a motion to adjourn. Council Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seconded by Council Adjourn. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed? Carried. So back to you, Mr. Chair.